Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Garden's favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear There's been another burglary in the neighbourhood It's getting so you can't trust anybody these days Oh, I agree, Mrs. Brown. It's just terrible. Go ahead. But just one, or you'll spoil your dinner. I expect if I were a detective, I could catch that burglar in no time. Oh, so it's detective you're playing at, is it? Then maybe you can solve the mystery of who put this marmalade stain on the new tablecloth. Hmm, that's easy. I did. You see, my first case, and it's already solved. You won't believe what's happened. Someone's stolen my prize pumpkin. Never mind, Henry, dear. You've got several others just as good. I do mind. And the others will never be as good. Not in time for the vegetable show next week. Perhaps it was one of your competitors. That's it? Of course. You know, I've a good mind to offer some kind of reward. A reward? I set out to solve the case of the missing pumpkin. My first step was to visit Mr. Gruber at his antique shop. Mr. Gruber gave me a magnifying glass and an ink pad for taking fingerprints. How are you getting on, Mr. Brown? I'm afraid bears are good at making paw prints. Well, here are some other things you might find useful. A police whistle, a notebook for writing down clues, and some invisible ink. With all this equipment, I'm sure I'll be able to solve this case. Mm, there's only one thing missing. Every good detective needs a disguise. Now, let's see what we have. No. I don't think so. Definitely not. Now, that's better. Perfect! I decided to try out my disguise right away and find some clues. I was looking for a vegetable thief, so I thought the greengrocers might be a good place to start. Excuse me, but have you noticed any missing pumpkins lately? The greengrocer wasn't very helpful. But then I remembered something Mr. Gruber said. The criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. I had a perfect view of the back garden from my bedroom window. So that night, I lay in wait. <coughs> I had all the necessary surveillance equipment, and I was determined to stay up all night if I had to. something strange. When I flashed a light at the neighbor's house, someone flashed back. But the neighbors were away on holiday. It seemed very suspicious, so I decided to investigate. 
I knew where to find the key because Mrs. Bird was taking care of the plants while the neighbours were away. Hello! I was still looking for the missing pumpkin, so I went to check the refrigerator. I found cucumbers and tomatoes, but no pumpkin. No, no, slow down. Who's trapped? The burglar. I put a chair under the doorknob so he can't get out. Hey! Let me out of here! There is someone in there. Careful. He's probably dangerous. <laughs> you just let us worry about that. What's going on? Right. Someone's got some explaining to do. Let me see if I've got this right. You were looking for a missing pumpkin and you saw lights coming from an empty house. So you put on a disguise and packed up your... What was it? Marmalade sandwiches. Right. It's all here in my notebook. These pages are all blank. Well, of course. It's invisible ink. That's it. We're taking you in. Well, can I at least get my marmalade sandwiches? They're in the kitchen. The super is never going to believe this one. <laughs> what a story. Trust Paddington to catch a burglar with marmalade sandwiches. <laughs> well, I'm just glad it's over. But what about my pumpkin? Oh, I solved that case as well. You, you did? did? Of course. It was you, Mrs. Brown. You took the pumpkin. What? Oh, it's true, Henry. I'm sorry. I took the pumpkin by mistake. I didn't know you were going to enter it into the vegetable show. Hmm. But how did you figure it out, Paddington? Simple. Last night, you made pumpkin pie. So you see, Aunt Lucy, I solved the case after all, although Mrs. Bird confiscated my fingerprint pad. But not before I made one last paw print. <laughs> Mr. Gruber says Ireland is a magical place, rich in legend, myths, and some very strange customs. That's the famous Blarney Stone, Mr. Brown. If you kiss it, you will magically receive the gift of eloquence. Thousands of people have been there before you. Thousands? I don't think I fancy kissing it anymore. It's a good thing I've got something to take the taste away. Mr. Gruber told me that eloquence means you talk a lot. I wonder what Mrs. Bird would think about all this. She often says that bears should be seen and not heard. Do you feel any different, Mr. Brown? I was feeling dizzy. But I didn't want to disappoint Mr. Gruber in front of his friend. Why don't you say something really beautiful and poetic? There is no charge for kissing the Blarney Stone. Remove all loose valuables before doing so. They do say there's poetry in everything, if you look hard enough. Would you like to kiss the Blarney Stone, Siobhan? Oh, Grandfather, I'm too old for that silliness. I didn't think kissing the Blarney Stone was silly. Just dangerous. There's some marmalade. Ah, Mr. Gruber. Before Siobhan's last birthday, she loved my old tales in the Irish legends. I fear she may have forgotten about the part of her heart that wants to believe in such things as the Blarney Stone or leprechauns or Santa Claus. Not believe in Santa Claus? Mrs. Bird takes me to see him every Christmas. I wish there was some way to make Siobhan remember. Oh. Well... Let's go home for supper, and I'll tell you a wonderful story about a leprechaun. 
great. Now, while I love stories about leprechauns, it was clear Siobhan didn't. And that's when the young girl saw the leprechaun. Oh, she knew he'd show her where his treasure was hidden, but she had to keep staring at him, or he'd disappear oh. into thin air. I'm sure your hard stare would work very well on leprechauns, Mr. Brown. If they existed. Grandfather's stories are okay, but I know leprechauns and fairies don't exist. How do you know that? Because I've never seen one. And you know what they say, seeing is believing. Good night, Paddington. Seeing is believing? Oh, it's you, Mr. Brown. What are you doing? Seeing is believing, Mr. Gruber. <laughs> it certainly is. Siobhan said she doesn't think leprechauns are real because she's never seen one. But if she did see one, she might believe in them again and in all the old stories she used to love. Mr. Brown, you are a genius. But I'm a bear. There are times when that is one and the same thing. Come, we have work to do. You take the library, Mr. Brown, and see if you can find out what a leprechaun looks like. Bears are good at finding out things. Meanwhile, I will try to gather together some treasure. Aha! The Leprechaun of Ireland. Legend has it that if you catch a leprechaun, he will lead you to a treasure. But take your eyes off him and he will vanish into thin air. At least you couldn't mistake him in a crowd. When you want to find out something, there's nothing like a good book. The trick is finding the right one. I wish Aunt Lucy could see me now. You make a wonderful leprechaun, Mr. Brown. And this bucket of marbles looks like real gold. But whatever else you do, you mustn't speak, because that will give the game away. <laughs> now get some sleep. Tomorrow, we try to remind Siobhan about how much fun magic and stories can be. Good night, Mr. Brown. I was looking forward to the morning. I'd never been a leprechaun before. I wonder where Mr. Brown is. It's not like him to oversleep. Please, can you go and see if he's awake, Siobhan? Okay. Oh, I, I overslept. I hope I'm not too late to be a leprechaun. Paddington! Hey, what's been going on? I see you, Paddington. Hey, nice trick. I didn't know bears were so fast, but I bet I can still catch you. You're not a leprechaun, you know. It was really Mr. Brown's idea. He just needed a little assistance here and there. That's a very convincing costume. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was a real leprechaun. Ha! There you are! <laughs> Back so soon, Mr. Brown. But I've only just begun, Mr. Gruber. It's nice to see you are taking your role seriously. You were very convincing before. I didn't know what Mr. Gruber was talking about. Where did he go? Where did who go, Siobhan? Paddington. He was in the library just now playing tricks, pretending to be a leprechaun. In the library? Here's our leprechaun and his treasure. Yes, but I wasn't in the library nor the kitchen before now. I've only just woken up. Being a leprechaun makes you hungry, especially if you haven't had breakfast. But if that wasn't you in the library... Or in here? Then who? A real leprechaun. Look! Where did he go? Out the window. But I'm sure I left it closed. He's gone. Do you think it was a real leprechaun, Mr. Gruber? I'm not sure, Mr. Brown. But this will certainly make a great chapter in my book, The World and Its Wonders. To think, thanks to Paddington, I've seen a real leprechaun. And seeing is believing.
morning, Paddington. Good morning, Judy. What are you doing? <sighs> Do you remember the radio contest I entered, Judy? Well, the winner is supposed to be notified by this morning's post. <sighs> there, there, Paddington. There'll be other contests you can... What's this? A letter addressed to Paddington Brown. Dear Mr Brown, for correctly answering Lima as the capital of Peru, you have won tickets to the new play No Daughter of Mine, starring Cecily Bloom. A play! Cecily Bloom. I haven't seen him on stage since I was a schoolgirl. Oh, he was so handsome. <laughs> was is right. He's a great old bear of a man now. Oh! Old bear? I suppose he does look a bit like my uncle in darkest Peru. Not enough cheese. How am I to remember my lines when fed such meagre fare? Yes, well, maybe we should go over some of those lines, Cecily. Now, your first line is, My daughter has yet to return. Oh, how I hate opening nights. I'd seen pictures of theatres before, but I'd never been inside one. I couldn't wait to see the stage. Although it looked as if I might have to. This is much better. It's lucky bears have good eyesight. You can use those opera glasses. They're only 20p. 20p for a pair of opera glasses is very good value. They'll be handy for watching television at home. You don't get to keep them. You put them back when you leave. What? Shh! <coughs> but 20p! My marmalade! Oh! Sandwich! My sandwich daughter! <laughs> My daughter has yet to return. Her mother will be heartbroken! Marmalade! Her marmalade will be heartbroken. <laughs> Her mother will be heartbroken. Don't worry, I have another one. <coughs> oh, Father, please let me stay. Please let me stay. No! No! <laughs> Fancy Sir C turning his own daughter out into the cold. He's ignoring my hard stares. Perhaps it's because I'm using these opera glasses. Oh. <laughs> Don't you worry, Judy. Mr. Brown would never treat you like that. Shh. There was only one thing to do. I had to tell the man that it wasn't his daughter's fault. She just made a mistake. And I'm a bear who knows about making mistakes. Oh, father! Don't worry, Miss Bloom. Wait until I speak with your father. My father? Oh, you mean Cecily. He'll be off at the end of the act. Oh, why am I forced to do this thing? There must be a way to change these circumstances. But she, my only daughter, has disgraced and besmirched the family name. I'll just wait for Cecily to come off stage and then tell... What? My line, my line! Um, I have cast my daughter from my home. May her cursed soul forever roam. Why is Paddington on I Cecily's have cast bed? cast my daughter from my home. May her cursed soul forever roam. What's more? You are a nasty man who should... Ha, 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 ha. A oh. ghost! A ghost? Where? There is nothing about a ghost in here. <laughs> the ghost! I'm not a ghost. I am Paddington Brown. And you are a hard-hearted father who won't even listen to his own daughter. You should come and stay at Mr. and Mrs. Brown's. They took me in, and I came all the way from darkest Peru. <laughs> what is so funny? Don't you see, darling? 
Paddington believes you really are throwing me out into the world without a penny, it shows what a great actor you are. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Quite an understandable mistake. Especially for such an intelligent and cultured-looking bear. You see, darling, we were only acting. But I shall always remember the brave bear who came to my rescue. Cecily, how about if... Um, I'm so sorry, Cecily. You see, Paddington tends to get a bit carried away. We'll just leave and let you get on with your play. Nonsense. We have decided we need a ghost for the second act, and this young bar is a born actor. <laughs> Never been so scared in my life. Don't thank me. Thank the ghost. The ghost. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to someone who has reminded me of the power of the theatre and frightened me into remembering all my lines. <laughs> Paddington Brown. Oh, I love opening nights. And so do I, Aunt Lucy. Cecily even gave me this autograph picture, which I am sending to you. To Paddington, from an old bear to a great one. Oh, Paddington, me so magnifico. <laughs>